Mom, we need to have a serious talk about what you did at the hospital today. I can't believe you would do something so hurtful and disrespectful to me and my wife. What are you talking about, son? Don't pretend like you don't remember. You were yelling at my wife in front of everyone. You were accusing her of being a terrible driver and saying that she was the reason why I ended up like this. You blamed her for causing me to be paralyzed. That's because she's the one who is responsible for this tragedy. She was the one who was behind the wheel when you got into that horrible accident. And this awful thing happened to you. Now my baby boy can't walk anymore. But that's not the truth, Mom. How many times do I have to explain this to you? We were stopped at a red light, obeying the traffic rules, and we were hit from behind by a guy in a truck who had fallen asleep at the wheel. It's not my wife's fault at all. Even if she had seen the truck coming towards us, there was nothing she could have done. We couldn't have moved out of the way because there were other cars stopped in front of us too. But if this terrible accident hadn't happened, you'd still be able to walk and run and dance. I'm your mother. I have to find someone to blame for this. Did you really just say that I would still be a normal person if this hadn't happened? Are you implying that I'm not a normal person anymore because I'm in a wheelchair? Listen, Mom, I don't care what you think your justification for being angry is. It's not my wife's fault, and I don't ever want to hear you say such cruel things to her again. She was injured in this accident too, you know. She has a broken arm and a concussion. So what? I don't care about what happens to some other woman's child. I'm only concerned for you. You can't blame me for being upset about your situation. You don't care about what happens to some other woman's child. You realize that she is my wife, right? She is the love of my life and the mother of our future children. She is part of our family. And this isn't the end of the world for me. I'll be in a wheelchair, but I'll still be able to work and live a normal life. So I don't need any more unnecessary worry from you. So this is how you treat me for caring about my son. Fine. If that's what you want, then I'll leave you alone. Son Tiago, I have something important to tell you. I was thinking about this a lot last night, and I came to the conclusion that it could be best for both of us if we just sever ties to each other and never spoke to each other again. What are you saying, Mom? Well, let's face it. Now that you're paralyzed, you can't really take care of yourself anymore, can you? You need someone to help you with everything, from getting dressed to going to the bathroom. If you can't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of me when I get older and need your assistance? Take care of you, huh? Is that what this is all about? You're saying that since I can't look after you when you get old and frail, you want nothing to do with me anymore? Well, not just that. But even now I don't have the time or the energy to take care of you in your condition. I'm too old to be looking after anyone anymore. I have my own problems and needs. I know you've been helping me out with some bills since I don't work, but don't worry about me. I'll just live off the inheritance I got from your father when he passed away. And having one less family member to worry about will make things a lot easier for me. Just consider me not taking care of you in your current state as payment for raising you when you were a child. You're okay with all this, right? You must be out of your mind. How can you say such things to your own son after he gets into a major car accident that changes his life forever? I can't believe what I'm hearing from you. Mm, but you see where I'm coming from, don't you? I worked so hard to raise you all by myself. I did everything for you and gave you the best education and opportunities I could, hoping that you'd return the favor for me when I got older and needed your help. But it seems that's not possible anymore. A son can't even walk by himself is of no use to me. 
So please, just let me go. Let me be free from this burden. Fine, but just so I've got this straight. You're saying that you gave birth to me and raised me just so that I could take care of you when you're older? And now that I can't walk, I'm worthless to you. So you don't want to ever see me or talk to me again. Well, it sounds bad when you say it like that, but yes, this isn't my fault. Planning is the most important thing in life. I was planning for my future then, and I'm planning for my future now. I gave this a lot of thought, and this is the best decision for me. If we cut all ties to each other, well, I'll be fine. I can live comfortably off of my husband's inheritance. And this way you won't have to worry about looking after me when I get older or feel guilty about not being able to do so. It's a win-win situation. Look, Mom, do whatever you want. If you don't ever want to speak to me again, that's fine by me. But if you're cutting all ties to me, that means you better never contact me ever again for any reason. I know what it means. I should be telling you that. That means I don't want you stepping foot in this house again, trying to get anything that belongs to me or your dad. Starting tomorrow, we're not related anymore. Santiago, you snuck into my house today, didn't you? How dare you take my fridge and my TV? Return those things to me immediately! Those are mine. I paid for them myself with my own money when I was living there. I'm sorry for leaving them there when I moved out. I should have taken them with me sooner. That was an oversight on my part. Sorry about that. I'm glad that spare key was still in the fake rock we hid in the garden. Oh, by the way, I put all the food from the fridge into a cooler in the garage. I suggest you eat it all before it spoils or donate it to someone who can use it. Oh, I can't believe you! How can you be so selfish and mean? Oh wait, you're not my son anymore. <laughs> Whatever, I don't care about those things. Like you said, they've been here a long time. They're old and worn out. I'll just use some of your dad's inheritance and buy new ones that are nicer and more advanced. Yeah, why not? It was only the latest model of fridge when it came out. And a 75-inch OLED 4K TV shouldn't cost you too much. <laughs> just use some of dad's money to go get new ones. <laughs> it's your money now. Do whatever you want with it. I don't need you to tell me that. But that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Don't message me anymore, and don't try stepping foot in this house again. And if you do, I'll call the cops and accuse you of breaking and entering. You were the one who messaged me first, and you were the one who cut me off from your life, remember? Of course I remember. And I don't regret it. You're no longer my son. You're just a stranger who stole my things. I didn't steal anything. Those things belong to me, Mom. Don't call me Mom. This is not you. The woman who raised me, taught me right from wrong, and supported me in everything I did. Stop babbling and never text me again. Santiago. What do you want now? You keep messaging me even though you said you never wanted us to speak again. You said you hated me and wished I was never born. I just have one last thing I want to say to you. One final message before I block you and delete your number. What? What could you possibly have to say to me after all the hurtful things you said? I threw out everything that was in your old room, and I mean everything. All your clothes, all your photos, all your memories. What? What do you mean you threw out everything? Why would you do that? That was my stuff! Ha! Huh. Well, don't blame me. Why would I want a total stranger's things in my house? Remember, we're strangers now. 
You're not my son anymore. Yesterday was garbage day, so I put everything out to the curb. I watched them all get put into the back of the garbage truck, too. It felt so good to get rid of all that junk. You didn't throw out all the hockey and baseball cards that were in the cardboard box, did you? If it was in your room, then yes, I did. Oh no, don't tell me I threw out something you really wanted, did I? <laughs> I'm sorry, but it was all taken to the dump yesterday, so there's no way to get it back now. You did a really stupid thing, Mom. Huh? Are you saying you threw out everything Dad left to you in his will? Everything he wanted you to have after he passed away? The things Dad left to me? What are you talking about? Dad's collection. I can't believe you did that. A lot of those cards are worth between $500 to $2,000 a piece. Some of them are even more rare and valuable than that. Dad had so many amazing cards. The value of cards varies year by year, but I'm sure you'd have gotten at least $100,000 if you'd have sold them all. Huh? What are you talking about? You're kidding, right? Sports cards are just a kid's game, aren't they? They're just pieces of cardboard with pictures of people on them. They're not worth anything. Trading cards aren't a game. They're a hobby and an investment. Rookie cards of popular or famous players can be worth big bucks, especially if they're in mint condition and have a high grade from a reputable company like PSA or Beckett. Why did you think Dad was collecting them and holding on to them in the first place? He knew they would increase in value over time. You know I don't like sports. If it involves sports or stupid cards, I never listened to a word he said. He was always talking about his stupid collection and how much he loved it, and how proud he was of it, and how he wanted to share it with me someday. But I didn't care. I didn't want anything to do with him or his stupid hobby. Ha ha! Santiago, I'm still waiting for you to say gotcha. You weren't kidding, were you? Those things are worth money? Wait a minute. If they were worth money, how come you didn't take them with you? Oh, I couldn't take those with me. He left those to you. He was specific about that in his will. He said those cards were for his beloved wife Josephine, who always supported him and loved him unconditionally. Those cards were his way of saying thank you and showing his appreciation for everything she did for him. Uh-huh. You know, Dad was a collector. He collected everything. A lot of the stuff he collected just gets more valuable the older it gets. That's why he didn't sell anything before he died. He left you the things that would be worth the most in the future. You know, he gave me a few of the bigger, heavier antiques for me and my wife's new house. But he left all the small stuff for you because it would be easier to store, move around, or just sell. I know that, but I, I didn't know trading cards were worth anything. They're just small pieces of cardboard. Obviously, you didn't know Dad told you before he died that if you ever needed money, you could sell his collections. I assumed if the time came that you ever needed to sell things, I'd come and help you with it. But then, you decided to never speak to me again because of my accident. I had no idea. Well... I never thought you'd throw that stuff out. You knew those cards were part of Dad's collections? It's kind of funny. You threw me away, and then you threw those cards away! Ha ha ha! They were in your own room. I thought they were yours. Mom, I moved out long ago. I live with my wife. I have everything of mine here. I have everything Dad left me in his will, too. I came back the other day to get the only things of mine that were still in that house. The fridge and the TV. Everything else in there is yours. Santiago, please. You've got to go to the dump and try to get those cards back for me. Huh? No way. I'm in a wheelchair. I can't go there and do that. But you said they were worth over $100,000. You can probably find them if you get there right away. I can't search around a dump in a wheelchair. Besides, cards are worth money based on condition. They were probably crushed in the back of the garbage truck. I can't see them being worth anything now. 
The plastic card cases they were in wouldn't protect them from a garbage truck's trash compactor. Stop making excuses and try. At least a few of them must have survived. Wait, I've got it. If you can get those cards back for me, I'll let you be my son again. Then I'll be able to help support you again. I don't need you to support me. I'm a grown man. What are you talking about? You're in a wheelchair. You can't do anything by yourself. I'm not by myself. I'm married. My wife is here. And you know what my job is, don't you? You know I'm a 3D sculptor. People hire me to make models and sculpt for everything from plastic miniatures for painting to scale prototypes of projects. I sit at a desk and use 3D sculpting software all day. I don't need legs to do that. There are tons of jobs where people just sit at a desk all day. I don't know why you think people in wheelchairs can't do anything. Huh? You mean even though you had a big accident and you can't walk anymore, your income isn't going to change? Exactly. You really don't know anything about me, do you? In fact, I'll be getting a big settlement from insurance for this accident I had. I'll probably never need to work again, but I will because I love my job. What? You're getting money from this accident? I didn't know all that. Well, it doesn't matter to you anyway. I'm not your son anymore. Santiago, why are you being so cold to your mom all of a sudden? Your dad died and you moved out. I'm all by myself. How about you and your wife come live with me? Come over for dinner tonight. Let's talk about it. No way. Do you think I'm stupid? Why are you saying that to me anyway? You're the one who wanted to cut all ties with me. Santiago, please. Things are really tough for me. Thinking about my future now is making me really uncomfortable. I'm not surprised. I assumed it would. That's why I put the cards in a spot you'd easily see them in in case you wanted to sell them. You were the one who went on a rampage and wanted to destroy anything you thought was mine. Honestly, I don't even feel sorry for you anymore. I've got it. How about you give me all the antiques that Dad left to you? I don't care if they're big and heavy. Huh? Why would I do that? Dad left those things to me and my wife. I'm not going to get rid of them. I don't want you selling them for money. Those things are all I have left of Dad. He treasured those things, and I'm going to treasure them too. At least give me a couple of them. You don't want those old things sitting in your new house. They won't match anything. Giving them to me is your best option. Don't you think your dad would be happy too because you'd be helping me out? You just don't get it, do you? Anyway, I'm not giving you anything Dad left to me. And there's no way on earth me and my wife are going to move in with you. From now on, I'm not even going to reply to any of your messages. You're so insensitive. I can't stand talking to you anymore. I've got money left in the bank. I don't need you or those antiques Dad left you. Yeah, about that. Mom? You're relying too much on that money Dad left you. I think you need to get a job. What do you have left in the bank? How much is it? Like a hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, so what? That's more than enough. How many people do you know with a hundred grand in their bank account? I'm rich. Do you think you can live off that for the rest of your life? Huh? It's a hundred grand. Yeah, and how much do you spend now in a year? Twenty thousand? Just do some simple math and you'll see that it's only going to last you about five years. When Dad was alive and working, your standard of living was a little high. That's why he could afford to buy all those antiques and things. But that's impossible for you now. What are you saying? Are you saying I'm going to have to cut back on my spending even more than I am now? I can't do that. I've got a hundred grand in the bank. There are so many things that I want to buy. 
But mom, planning is the most important thing in life, remember? <laughs> I know you can do it, mom. Oh, and by the way, don't even think about coming to live with us. We don't let strangers into our house. Santiago, wait, I'm not a stranger. We're family. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Santiago! Mom, I'm paralyzed, remember? Having one less family member to worry about will make things a lot easier for me. You've got the rest of Dad's inheritance to do whatever you want with, and I've got a wife who loves me and will help take care of me. It's a win-win, isn't it? The next day, my mom rushed to the dump by herself, desperate to find the cards she had thrown away. She didn't bother to ask permission from the dump workers, so she snuck in and started digging through the piles of trash. The police were called, and by the time they dragged her out of the dump, she was covered in garbage and stunk to high heaven. She looked like a madwoman, with dirt and grime all over her face and clothes. The police assumed she was off some sort of medication or something, so they brought her to my house. But I explained to them that we had cut all ties to each other and that I wouldn't be taking responsibility for her. I told them she had thrown away a valuable collection that belonged to my late father, and that she had no right to do so. The police had no choice but to take her back to her house. It was clear they didn't want her sticking up their lockup area, even for one night. They warned me to stay away from her, as she seemed unstable and dangerous. A few days after that, my wife and I returned home from a trip to find quite a surprise when we opened their door. It looked as if a tornado had gone through the inside of our house. We had been broken into, but I knew that it was my mom who had done it. She had smashed the windows and kicked down the door, looking for anything of value that my dad had left me. I swear, my mom doesn't listen to anything anyone tells her, because I told her that dad left all the small things to her. Nothing of mine was taken, because all the antiques I got from dad were way too big for my mom to move by herself. But she had made a mess of everything, throwing things around and breaking them. She had also left a note on the kitchen table, saying that she hated me and that I was a selfish and ungrateful son. She said she hoped I would rot in hell for what I did to her. But my mom had tested my patience to its limit, and I decided to call the police on her for breaking into my house. When the police came and picked her up for the second time within a week, they explained how serious the consequences for breaking and entering could be if I proceeded to press charges. My mom realized that I was serious and that she needed to back off, and she begged me not to send her to jail. She said she was sorry and that she loved me and that she just wanted the cards back. But I didn't believe her. I knew she only cared about the money. I decided not to press charges, but I also decided not to ever speak to her again. It's possible that I might change my mind someday in the future, but as for now, we've put up our house for sale, and we're going to be moving away without telling her where we're moving to. I'm changing my cell phone number too. That way, I won't have to worry about her contacting me ever again and harassing me every few days. <laughs>